Okay, so hey guys, it's Quinston and today we're going to learn about the Sudoku solver. Now this is a recursive program to solve the Sudoku puzzle. Now I assume all of you who are watching this tutorial know what a Sudoku puzzle is. If you do not know and you wish to know, there is a link in the description to a Howcast video which will explain to you what a Sudoku puzzle is and how you proceed to solving it. And uh, also this is a very uh, simple recursive backtracking algorithm, so it's not nothing very fancy, it's pretty simple. If you have seen the my previous end queen problem tutorial it is very similar to that one and uh, yeah it does have a few tricks up its sleeve but it is very much similar so before uh, beginning with this thing i just wanted to take a few minutes or a few seconds and get the notation out of the way now whenever you see a sudoku puzzle you usually see a lot of spaces and some numbers in between so here i i've denoted the spaces with zeros so you can see wherever there's a zero, there is practically supposed to be a, a space, a spot which is empty. And wherever there's a number, there is a number, it's fixed and you cannot change these numbers in the solution. Okay, so the first function we're going to address is the isful function. And as you can see in the caption, it returns false if any of the fields are zero, else it returns a true. What this means is that if there are spaces still existing inside the board, then you return a, a false uh, essentially. And if there is no space inside the board, Board, you return a true. Uh, how this works basically it goes through each field one after the other say uh, from here it goes to this one 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 and if it finds any vacant spaces it returns a false and if none of these are vacant if every field is filled with a number one two three up to nine whatever number then it returns a true. Okay, now let's go to the code and see how this function is actually made. So yeah, this is the isful function, which is basically um, what I just told you. It goes from x, uh, which is in range from 0 to 9. So this is the for loop, which goes from 0 to 9. And uh, 9 not included, which means it goes to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Similarly, for y in range of 0 to 9, which means y goes from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And if board x, y, board is used to represent the Sudoku puzzle board, which we just saw in the slides. And x, y are the coordinates, x being the vertical coordinates and y being the horizontal coordinates. Uh, basically, 0, 0 is the top uh, left part of the um, entire board and um, 0, 8 being the top right part of the entire board. Similarly, you can get the analogy. If the board x, y is equal to zero if any of these if it finds even one zero in the entire board which means there is one space existing then it returns a false if there is no space in the board then it returns a true because this whole thing will be executing over and over again until it reaches the end of the loops and it still didn't uh, find anything that is equal to zero so it will say hey let this be i'm not going to do anything else i'm just going to return true so yeah it comes out of the loop and returns true that's how this works so the next function we're going to take a look at is the possible entries function and this function is basically used to you know generate the possible entries for a particular spot in the uh, sudoku board what this means is that you take any random uh, uh, position over here suppose this is a zero comma zero and then you generate the a number of um, the amount of numbers or an, an array of numbers which you can fit in successfully without actually crashing the entire puzzle uh, which by which I mean is that if you know the basic rules of uh, Sudoku and you know how to play it, you would realize that um, you can generate an array, a, a possibility array regarding which numbers you can put in. So what you can do here is that you can take a number, suppose you start from 1 to 9, uh, 1 included and 9 also included, you say, uh, does 1 fit in over here? Uh, well, 1 is uh, over here, so 1 does not go over here, so you can't include 1 in the list. What about two? Two is over here, so you can't include two in the list. What about three? Three is over here, so you can't include it in the list. What about four? Um, okay, there is no four in here. Is there a four over here? No, no four. So four is in the list. What about five? Yeah, pretty much. Six and nine? Yes, pretty much. Why not eight? Because eight is over here, so you know, even in this particular part, you can't include eight. And seven? Yeah, no seven. So four, five, six, and nine are the possible entries which can fit in this particular spot. Similarly, you can do the same thing for this one, uh, zero. Uh, here, one, yes, one can be fit in. Five, yes, five can be fit in. Six, seven, eight. Similarly, you can apply the logic and you can understand that, yeah, it pretty much works for that. And similarly, you can get uh, the possible entries for any possible um, entry hmm, position in the entire board. 
So let's check out how this function actually works in the code section. So the first thing I did in the possibility function uh, is I named it basically. It's named possible entries and it returns a list of all the entries which are possibly, you know, possible to be put in that position. And it also takes the actual position which you want to put inside. And then it, you also have the board over here which is basically, you know, the board which you're going to check for. So a uh, possibility array is declared over here. And um, as the name suggests, is basically an array, but don't let it confuse you. This is use, this is actually a list, uh, sorry, a dictionary in Python. And you can use it for any key value pair uh, comparison. If you are doing it in some other language, you can even use two different uh, arrays for, for doing this. But for me, this data structure is, uh, is possibly useful. So I did it like this. You can do it whatever you want. It's just it's just um, syntax, you know. So here you have for x in range of one to ten. I, I chose one to ten because in the Sudoku puzzle, uh, numbers uh, which you enter into the puzzle into the spots are basically ranging between one to nine, one and nine included, and so you have to have numbers from one to nine. And possibility array of x is equal to zero. I've initialized this array. For, for nine numbers from one to nine, and they are zero um, initially, then we'll change them over here. Yeah. So for horizontal entries, now you're checking for the horizontal entries in the in the entire array. You have y over here, and I chose y because um, in normally when you go horizontally from left to right, you use y as a variable for incremental um, analysis. And uh, yeah, that's why I did this. So for y in range of zero comma nine, obviously it goes from zero to eight, nine not included. Uh, if not board of i comma y equal to equal to zero what this means is that if the entry in the board which you're considering right now is not equal to zero then add that as a possibility array board i comma y equal to one what this basically means is that if the number which you're at if the position which you're at is not equal to zero right if that's not equal to zero then take that value which is not zero and find that index, that particular index inside the possibility array and assign that index as one. And if you would uh, understand, by this you will get a possibility array which uh, is like zero, one, one, zero, one, whatever, like one and zero in the possibility array. And um, after you get that, after you get them for all of these, you can basically assign whichever are zero as the possible entries and whichever are one are already present inside the board. So whatever is one, it's already there and whatever is zero is what you want to put. So whatever is zero are the possible entries and whatever is one are the not possible entries. If you know what I mean, rewind this and listen to me say it again if you don't understand. Uh, so you do, do the same for the vertical entries. And for this, you go from X for X in range of zero comma nine. Uh, don't confuse between X and Y because X and Y are basically just different notations to, to say different things. Okay. For x in range of 0, 0,9, just a for loop. If board of x, comma j uh, is not equal to 0, possibility array of this is equal to 1. The same thing what we did over here, but you know, we are going from top to bottom. Now, what are i and j? i is basically a constant which you get what from here, right? So if you have i and suppose you enter board 0, 0, you go from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 8, but this is constant. So you go from top to bottom over here and you go from left to right over here. Similarly, uh, for squares of three by three, you have K and L. Now I've included K and L because I have some logic over here, which I want to implement. So to check the values of these squares, what I did was I took two variables K and L to, you know, be, be initialized in such a way that they would always point to the start of this values, these values over here. So if the, if the values of I comma J were somewhere in between over here, you will automatically follow some logic and set k and l as to one of these. Okay, so because you, you need to start from here. So if you have l comma k is equal to this value, uh, this um, position over here, they'll always increment three on this side and three on this side. So you'll be you'll be sure of them only affecting this particular square. So the logic which they will follow is if i is greater than or equal to zero and i is less than or equal to two, k equal to zero because you know, else if i is greater than or equal to three and i is less than or equal to five, k equal to three. And similarly, else if either of these are false, then this is the answer. Similarly, this, if j is greater than or equal to zero and j is less than or equal to two, l is equal to zero and so on and so forth. And then what you do is you go from x in range of k comma k plus three, because now k is initialized to some of these values, three comma uh, six or three or zero comma three or whatever. And you want to um, 
conf confine them in ranges of 3 horizontally and vertically. So you go x in range of k, uh, comma, k plus 3 and y in range of l, comma, l plus 3. And uh, whatever we did up there uh, applies over here. The same uh, same line is basically copied and pasted. I mean, I'm so lazy. Okay, uh, so yeah, this is how that works. Okay, now as I told you earlier, for x in range of 1, comma, 10, if possibility area of x equal to equal to 0, which means that there is a possibility that this uh, space over there is empty. So we say possibility area of x is equal to x because we want to return the array, okay, we want to return the possibility array with, with, with legible values and not just ones and zeros, yeah? Else, if the possibility array is x uh, is equal to equal to one, which means that those values are already there inside the particular Im implemented uh, Sudoku puzzle and we do not want to put them there again, and so you return that then you assign them as zero and return the possibility array. If you want to know more about this function, uh, the code is in the description. Just run this function and put printfs or you know print statements wherever you find, and then you can understand what's actually happening. For now, let's move on to the Sudoku solver.